Hey guys, this is RPG Caster um, with our first match with commentary, and I'm here with Silent Tom to give you commentary. Say hi. How's it going, guys? Yeah, so starting with the opening mulligan, I th keep a half moon and a crescent moon, and Nathan. What did he keep? Can't remember. Can't really see what's on his hand cam, Tom. Yeah, we'll uh, have to get someone less monstrous to uh, <laughs> to play next time. Yes. I think uh, might another a slightly smaller opponent would be better for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Felt kind of like facing a giant. I've just mulliganed into a Amaterasu and two critical triggers, so I'm pretty much set from one to three. Mm-hmm. And All right, well, yeah. while he's shuffling up, what do you think of this matchup? Uh, matchup against Paladins, I said it during my deck check that um, Paladins hit hard because they seem to uh, apply a lot of early pressure. Um, it's always a tough thing. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. So Nathan starts off drawing into grade 3 Galahad. Mm -hmm. And his top 5 check reveals a critical trigger and a heal trigger, as well as two Isolders, which were the only two in his deck, I believe. Yep. And those play a pretty critical role yeah. uh, later in the game. So, interesting to see that, guys. It's one of the advantages of having the uh, hand cams. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. Just uh, grade one from hand, pass the turn. Yes. Um, going to see if you can uh, put on the early pressure. Yeah. Um, though having the 7k out there does deny you of that early mocker pressure. Mm. So if you took a look there, I actually top-checked into a grade 3 Sukiyomi without having one in hand, which is kind of painful, but still two left in deck, so I wasn't feeling the pressure at that point. Sure. So you've played the Gemini. Um, do you think that's a bit of a risky play, mm. considering you could um, try and take it out? You are only running four, and you do need it for the Tom Yeah. against this deck. Um, it was a risky player, but since I'm versing a deck that applies the early pressure, I like to apply some of my own so that my opponent doesn't get too much advantage by the time we get to grade three. Sure. Um, so you filled him with stock. You're not afraid of the um, the blast blade, obviously. He's no. Galahad, so realistically, probably not going to see it. Um, he misses his grade two, so mm. I think he's throwing this out there to try and get a, a bit more get a bit more pressure on. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep, grade two comes out there, so um, I wasn't really. Are you feeling the pressure now? Uh, no, <laughs> I had one in hand, so I was all right. All right, and of course, guarding early to make sure I don't have to guard the bigger attacks later in the game. Exactly. So draw into um, a Tom, and top check another grade three, and two critical triggers. I'm kind of cringing at this point. Um, just chuck that stuff back on the bottom, and then ride the grade two from hand. Yep. Soul charge the two, which reveals my final full moon. Ooh. Now, um, I really like Nathan's play playing the um, the Margal at the back. Mm. Um, is it? It means that he can hit slightly harder early on, and later on when he wants to put something bigger there, he can just uh, get rid of it. And he's gonna want to build that soul anyway to get um, soul saver or um, Galahad. Galahad off, taking the damage there. Um, what's he got in hand? Um, cannot remember. I don't have the hand cam up at the moment. Yep. But I think he has ample. Ooh, maybe not. He's he's uh okay, taking so a lot he, of early damage here. He keeps drawing into these grade three Galahards, so that would probably be the problem he's facing. Yeah. So he took all that damage, and the final card of his top check was the grade two. Had he not taken that, he would have missed again. Yeah, he was um, toying around with his hand there, seeing if he wanted to block that fourth damage, but uh, really paid off here uh, to get that uh, that grade two Galahad. Obviously, he didn't know it, but um, you know, luck luck always helps. Yes, it does. He's still turned behind though, and he is um, holding you know a lot of junk, so he will have to make it through this turn. Hopefully, I think he's hoping that you don't put on a lot of pressure. Yeah. So there, a top check. Um, two heal triggers and a critical, which I, of course, stack together, as mentioned in the deck check. Mm -hmm. um, so, with Nathan, I like that he moved the um, the Pongal back. Uh, not, you know, obviously if he had got a trigger, he could have made it 12 to hit harder. But mm, I think it's a good move to put it back because he does want to stay in this game for the long run. Mm. Um, and he doesn't want to be losing, um, uh, losing cards to nothing. Mm. 
What's a red eyes coming out here on the Amaterasu? You want to soul charge your whole deck or something? <laughs> Not really. No plan. I was just oh, out there to put a lot of pressure. Heal trigger comes off there. Um, mm. That's definitely going to help because it's going to make um, uh, guarding just that much easier. Yep. So first check, draw trigger and drawing into a critical trigger psychic bird. And then now the critical. Sure. Um, I think he's going to be okay with that because um, he did uh, did get the single trigger. Yeah. So he's not going to have to throw away too, too much, much, even even to that double trigger, which would use usually force some um, force out two two ten k guards. guards. Yes. All right. So now he's finally on to his uh, grade three. On to his grade three, one of the many that he's holding. Um, so you'll see what he can do. He's probably going to. Um, play out a full field right here. Mm. So there we go. See it and the soul charge, which he gets actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. You see that promo? Terrible looking glass of blade. <laughs> no you effect. Just some running. Yeah. Yeah. Nine K vanillas are pretty good. All right. Chucks out a soul saver. Yep. Applying the pressure. Yeah. Um. Probably the right move there to play it in that way, leaving the um the 11k on the side mm. um he's toying around with his counter blast here he's seeing if he wants to go for it and he, he actually doesn't. he makes the smart move here of not going for it realistically you have too much too many cards in hand mm. um to just take it um you know, i think he wants to lull you into taking that one damage and one damage and then later on using that plus three um to kill you yep healer trigger doesn't go off that makes it a bit easier to guard for me. Yep, yeah, there we go. So, um, that's something that I think a lot of people can learn um, with effects like that. Mm. So, charging a Tom there, revealing a. Hmm, revealed a critical the... trigger. Ooh. But yeah, that's something everyone can learn is you don't have to um, throw away all your counter blast right at the start with overlords and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you gotta wait. Timing is always good. Yeah, and really in this game, timing is one of the most important aspects. Mm -hmm. So beating in here um, for 14, throws out the 10k guard, meaning that's going to be um, two triggers. So I get the critical, and I split the effect, adding the power to red eye so I can attack, and the critical to Tom. And here comes the interesting part. I attacked with the red eye first, um, which he took. And that critical trigger actually gave him enough power to guard the Tom, which he wouldn't have been able to guard previously. Do you yes. think that was a big big misplay on your part? Or do you mm. think that, you know, you would have done that any other day anyway? Yeah, I would have done that any other day, because had I actually... And if you... Um, yeah, if I had attacked with the Tom on any other day and gotten into a heal trigger or anything like that, then my red eye wouldn't have been able to do anything. Whereas in this case, the red eye hits... Um, and then the Tom forces a card out of my opponent's hand. Sure. Now, as you can see, exactly what I was saying before, soul charging the Margal, playing down the, um, Border uh, the nine, yep. yeah, the 9k, uh, rear guard. It's going to be hitting for 20 and now 23 and plus the Margal. 26. So 26. So that's some key numbers there. Um, threatened by the Tom, uh, I think that indication kind of just says, you know, he's not going to try and kill you this turn, mm. um, but he's going to try and kill you in a couple of turns. Chocolate comes down, heal trigger. Again. <laughs> Into and another 9k, which he'll probably yeah. stick behind the Galahad next turn. Yeah. So he's um, evened it out here with you taking that damage, 4-4. Uh, four to four. Um realistically you're both about on the same amount of gas you still have your tom up um but you could probably do with a bit more bit more beef obviously that red eye can't hit without a trigger mm. and that um amaterasu is only gonna be 14 um with four cards so yeah just drop the cocoa sending an amaterasu to the bottom of the deck don't need that there mm -hmm. so on this turn, did you realistically think you could kill him, or were you just trying to drain his hand? Just trying to drain his hand. Um, realistically, since I had missed the f three full moons early game, that put me in an uphill struggle, really. Sure. Um, Draws draw into another draw off. trigger, <laughs> which is the <laughs> worst thing that you can get, really. Especially against this deck. You really mm -hmm. want 10k guards against this deck. 
And then he grabs a draw trigger. Drawing into a... A grade 3 Galahad again. Yeah. So I think if you're going to... Oh, no, you actually go for the... um. Galahad here. I was thinking with 15, you'd pr yeah, yeah, you do change to the Soul Saver. Um, and I, he's going to be a okay with that, having just drawn that grade three. Mm. Um, I was going to say to you, uh, it must have felt pretty bad only having that red eye be hitting 15. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wasn't Galahad. really able to do much in the game, honestly. Yeah. So Galahad comes down and another 9k as well. So he's got two 20k rows. Um, 18 at the tom, yep. Got a lead. Did you... It. Yep. With so many 5Ks in hand, it's going to cost you mm. way too much. Um, at this point, I was contemplating dropping the Null Guard I had in hand, but went for the double 10K instead. Mm-hmm. Final um, Grade 3 Galahad comes up, and another heal trigger. He's really sticking in this game, mm. um, even though he was a turn behind, having missed that Grade um, grade 2. And now it's 4 to 5. Um going into this turn plenty of stock um leaves the draw trigger at the top yep you would really like a um a, a sukiyomi right now mm -hmm. with full full counter blast up um that's going to equal a lot of cards mm. so attacking with full power the Amaterasu 21,000 at the Galahad mm -hmm. probably the first big attack in this game I've yeah. put out there. I think you really need to do it. It's right now. Um, his deck is way too dangerous with four four stock up um, and multiple 20k rows. Mm. Um, I mean, a good draw could see him get another 9k. Yeah. Um, Rearguard, and I think that's even for um, the amount of card advantage you have, that's, that's way too dangerous. Draw into a grade 2 Tsukiyomi. Another trigger comes up on damage. If you look at all his damage... It's almost got, all triggers. Yeah, you've got heal crit, uh, draw crit there. Mm. There's a lot. He's getting really good um, good luck on the damage there. Um, and he comes out of that turn having only taken one damage and not dropping too many cards. I was actually remembering this part of the game. I was fearing him dropping down the Soul Saver and finishing me off. Mm -hmm. um, but no, yeah. he opts to drop the Galahad in the rear guard space, yeah. and yeah, yeah. I was, I also thought the same thing, but um, in this situation, Soul Save is not as good as it seems because you're going to lose that two um, k on the Galahad, and you're going to lose the three k on each of the rear guards. Yeah, that's very true. Because he doesn't have all the extra soul, so flips over four, um, okay. so he's going to have 26k coming at your Amaterasu. If you look at my hand cam right now, i got a null waiting there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's still, it's not a bad play. I mean, you can predict it, but he is forcing it out. Um, and he would have forced an extra card. So, there you go. as I was saying at, at the start of the game, those are two assaults at the start. Mm -hmm. They just come up and... When you saw that, what, what were you thinking? Um, at that point of the game, I wasn't so much concerned with his defenses as I was with my own. Drawing into uh, the full moon Tsukiyomi finally, and then just spamming out that counter blast. Yeah, I mean, this game is, um, you know, it was really turned on its head. At the start, it looked like you were just going to kill him pretty quickly, mm -hmm. but then as soon as he managed to stabilize... Um, He's really drawing it out, and those two null guards will just make it go so much longer. Mm. But uh, and now that you've got more gas, you have the defenses as well. <laughs> so um, I think this game we were starting to look at your deck, and we were thinking that that was probably your uh, your clock, not your damage zone. Yeah. Another Suki on me into the soul there. Mm -hmm. Replacing um, for another Tom. Yep, and a grade two. So um, that's another. I guess smart move there. Um, although you're only it's only a 15k line, mm. um, playing the grade two instead of the grade three. Yeah, because that way I have the intercept just in case something goes wrong. Yeah. Did you know this crit was coming up? Was this? Um, um, yes, I did know this critical was coming up, but yeah, nulled my vanguard, so I couldn't do anything about that. Mm. Yeah, and the the other nulls just going to come out and take the tom, so. Um, you did have to mix it up a bit here. It's, it wasn't the regular uh, throw everything on Tom and just kill him with that. Yeah. 
and there we go. The two assaults dropped. Yeah, so realistically, that was probably the best possible drive for him last turn. Mm. And he's going to um, stand and draw. And I'd say this is going to be his uh, his turn to really try and kill you. Mm. Just going to turn everything sideways. So, um, good thing about you having the super, super grade 3 now is that... Um, 11k defense means the... Means you're not going to have to drop so much yes. compared to our Madarasu because he's only hitting for 20. Mm. Yeah, no no triggers on the drive there. So, um, yeah, he knows that um, he can't kill you this turn, so he's just going to um, try and either take out your most aggressive option in the tom. Yeah. Or, yeah, force those last two cards out. So, uh, yeah, this things are looking either pretty grim for you or uh yeah putting that um uh that 6k up i think uh that's final turn if i've ever seen one yeah one card in hand isn't really not much i can do at this point yeah but... so beating in a lot of time really thinking about <laughs> this one um no, no. and this is you know, this is a common thing um really you know seeing calculating if, if you can guard it um, and uh, Tom just throws so many spanners in the works. Mm. Heel comes off. Um, and that extra that... damage is to finish him off. He only had the grade three in hand. Not really much yeah. he could have done about that. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. So if no triggers came off, he could have guarded that with the two, with the grade two and the grade um, one. Yep. But um, no, you uh, you needed that one tree. You got that. Um, and yeah, that's that's how the cookie crumbles. It just uh, exactly. you can you can be in position to win, but one trigger can ruin you. But um, it was a really good game there. Um, it was really interesting to hear mm. uh, hear your thoughts on that. Um, um, and it'll be interesting to ask Nathan about it. As yeah, well. it would be actually. Um, for me, that game was probably one of the more um, difficult games I've had to face against him. Uh, losing the full moon early game. Um, at that point in time, I thought I was out of the game, but just getting back to that cycle helped me be able to get advantage back up again. Sure. The thing I like about this game is that it shows you uh, what the decks can do mm. when they don't get their um, ideal hands. I mean, you having to go for Madarasu and him missing the grade two, mm. um, it really shows you just how to get yourself out of a rut um, rather than just, you know, Sukiyomi deck wins or... Uh, Galahad deck wins. Exactly. It was, um, it was really good. Um, but yeah, mm. no, that's it from uh, that's it from me. Yep. And um, you want to sign off? Yep. Um, so yeah, that's all we really got to show for this match today. Uh, if you have any comments that you want to leave below, just leave them down there. Any suggestions on how we can make these work a bit better would be helpful. And hopefully, you'll see us again with another Vanguard match with commentary. Catch you guys later.